Field, Chapter 8. Why did I pick this one? All these mystery religions and all these um, secret societies. You know, JFK warned about them. God warned about them. The only backup I found in the Bible is Ezra said, you know, tell people this stuff and keep this stuff for the wise. So that's one warning. But then the wise should know, that, you know, they got to, have to follow the rules too. So he has Ezekiel in this book, in this chapter 8. Find out a little more about him, how God feels about him. And it came to pass in the sixth year of the sixth month and the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me. Joshua, touching your shoulder. This is, this is him. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber, highly polished bronze. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the lock of mine head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me into the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh the jealousy. And behold, the glory of God was there, and I, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. We do know when the Maccabees time was around that there was actually, Antichrist Epiphanes brought a statue of Zeus and put him in the temple. I'm not really sure what other image it would be. I guess during time, I guess the kings, a lot of them, they would get rid of Yahweh worship, Yahweh worship, the creator worship, and they would worship the gods of the Assyrians, or the gods of the whatevers, the gods of the whatevers, and they would put this stuff in the temple. So, God reaches down, grabs him by the head, brings him up between heaven and the earth, and has him look in the temple and show him a statue, an image. Brought me to the visions of God, to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh the jealousy, the seat of the image. The seat of power, the seat of the dragon, it's in Berlin right now. That's just a guess. And behold, the glory of God was there, and according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then he said unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image. Lift up mine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. And he said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go afar off from my sanctuary. He doesn't want to be around them. But thee, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig now into the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. So he's like, they're in their secret rooms doing their initiations, you know, the whatever secret society you want to do. And you get to dig, look inside the wall and see what they're doing. Then he said unto me, so we're on 8-8. Son of man, dig in the wall, and when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said 
unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. God, I've learned so many things over this past couple of years that I can't even believe what they do. So I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the midst of the house of Israel and in the midst of them stood Jazaniah son of Shaphan with every man his censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense goes up like the ball thing they go and the incense comes up 70 men then he said unto me son of man has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark every man in his chamber chambers of his imagery for they say, The Lord seeth not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. The Lord's gone. He's busy. He's, he left us. So we're just do whatever we want. I mean, how, how many times have you heard this? The Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. 8.13 he said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. The most disgusting things that I've heard is the stuff with kids. You get them before a certain age, it gives the men power to take it away from the kids. I don't really want to explain it anymore. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the house of the Lord, the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, Ishtar, Tammuz, Horus, Isis, Osiris, mystery religions. So, so there's people crying for Tammuz. Women crying for Tammuz. And he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Like Easter is Ishtar. Not to him. It's to the sun, East. Who would have ever thought if you grew up as a person on this planet like me and you and everybody else, that Easter wasn't for... It's for the sun. Like this, the one in the sky. Not the lamb that rose. They took Easter, Ishtar, Tammuz, Babylon, Osiris, Egyptian, old religions, and Mithras, and smooshed them all together and then called it Easter. Kicked all the Jews out of the room at Council of Nicaea. They kicked out everybody that knew Hebrew and everybody that had a heart or integrity, and then they made, they made it. Changed day, put it to the moon. Changed day, changed everything. And then tell us you're Christian, and then, and then, then, go around Europe and kill you if you don't do what they say. Kill you if you don't believe what they believe. Burn all the books. I studied from the fall of the temple in 70 AD. I studied way back. I studied, a, but it's super important to track from the. Maccabees, probably before that, but at least the Maccabees got it back. The Hasmoneans to Rome, to the fall of the temple, you know, the Christ time. So what happened? How did all this happen to us? How come every king of Europe listens to the Pope? How come the, the, there's corporations of the Vatican? The Vatican owns almost everything. It is a good story, why? But what if they're teaching the wrong thing? Leading people to the mystery religion and not leading them to God. And they're the ones in charge of giving us the book. Better stop. 
but I looked inside and I now I know what Tammuz is and I know, you know, it's just a little word. God, I mean, to this God, this is an abomination to him because he's like, why are you worshiping the wrong things? Why are you giving these things power? 15. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. So this is in the temple, in God's house. I wonder what goes on in Salt Lake. It's a big long list of things you gotta do to become temple worthy before you're even allowed to find out. They saved the right day. Carved in the front of the wall. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, east, toward the sun, probably sunrise worship, and they worship the sun toward the east. So that's like the third abomination. He goes, oh, come on, son of man, I know I pulled you by your hair and you're in the sky between the earth and the heaven, or you're in another dimension, however you want to say it. And I'm gonna show you abomination one. Okay, first go dig in the wall and look what they're doing in my house. God's house. Abomination one, abomination two, abomination three. Then he goes, oh, and look, there's even worse things than that. There's 25 guys over there that are not worshiping the creator of all things. They're worshiping the sun. That's the. That's how bad it is to him. Like to us, we're just people, like whatever. But when you really understand, now that I really understand, why I worship a rock, why I worship a planet, why I worship a sun or a moon. God knows them all by name. Created things. Don't worship created things. He's the creator. Fellow servants, friends. I love the sun. I mean, I, it's my favorite thing. So as we come towards Passover, because today is March 21st, I am not against Christ. I am not against the resurrection of the three days. I mean, crucified and raised and again. I am against Rome, the Council of Nicaea, and the Fla Gen Gen G E N S Flavia. There's a bloodline of people that say they came from Moses and from the northern tribes of Israel and then they somehow got into Rome and then they just kept building their way up. And then they, you have to be genetically related to Flavia. Joseph Flacid, Flavia. It's another book, it's called the... Uh, I've been posting pictures about it on my Facebook. But if the wrong people are in charge of the right place, so we're in the right place with the right books, with the right stuff that's been twisted and changed to keep them in power, to the point where we have the Vicar of Christ. I'm not doing this out of disrespect. I'm just so pissed I can't even believe it. Is it his fault or is he just the last one? He's the 113th Pope. Hey, you might get to stay if you change Easter. Call it Restoration Day and do it on the right day. It's April 3rd, usually. April 3rd or 4th is Passover because you count from sundown to sundown. So it's the sundown of the second to the sundown of the third to the sundown of the sunrise. Yeah, that's the way God counts days. 
sundown to sundown. So if it's on April 3rd, that means April 6th would be Restoration Day every single year. One of the most interesting visions I've ever read was Joseph Smith and another guy in the Kirkland Temple in Ohio said that Jehovah, Moses, Elijah, Elias came and they told him that um, start the church. They came on April 3rd, the year before, and they said, you're going to start the church on April 6th, the next year. You're going to publish. So they did everything on April 6th. They published the book on April 6th. They started building the temple on April 6th. They finished on April 6th. They carved it on the front of the wall, April 6th, April 6th, April 6th. And then after Joseph Smith was dead, they're, because it was said that Jesus was born on April 6th. So if he's born on April 6th, how could that be? Well, if he died on April 3rd at about 3 o'clock, which is the, the ninth hour, what's three days later? April 6th, about the ninth hour, about 3 o'clock. So he could have rose as a spirit person. I mean, he rose. Resurrection Day was April 6th. The night of April 6th, the night of, you know, when some point on the third day he rose. That's his birthday. That's Restoration Day for all of us. God said to do Passover the same way. Spring solstice, because he set up the sky. He's the great engineer, like the Masons say. You know, he put everything in its place. And he says, on this day, you have to count equinox, this many days. And on this day, you're going to get a lamb, you're going to kill it, and you're going to take the blood, you're going to go and tell everybody, you better put it on the doorpost of your house because the death angel's coming. How was that time? Exodus getting out of Egypt. So now he has his own son killed on the same day as the Passover lamb. Somebody gets in charge of the church and decides in Nicaea, mm, you know what? We don't need to listen to that anymore. Let's philosophize about it. Let's hell in Nice. Hell in Nice the Jews. Let's Hellenize the world. I'm from Greek, so it's really hard. I don't even know how you get Zeus's land is Hellenized. So, as the greater abomination, how many abominations do we have? What did he say? Then he said unto me, this is over on 815. Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. This is for his kid on his day. This is so that all of our sins are forgiven for everybody. But instead, we're going to worship a son? Think of the end of The Matrix. If you've ever watched The Matrix, at the very end, you know, and he wins, Count Reeves saves Zion, does everything, and then he turns into a son. Like, he stands there, and then his whole body goes, and he turns into a son. So he's like the son of that you know, or that solar system. Well, if he's the sun, so let's say if God's the sun, there's a lot of stars up there. Which one is the right one? Or there's a creator of all of them. And he knows them all by name. So there might be a guy inside the sun, there might be a personality of the sun, but I still wouldn't want to worship it above the creator of all things. And obviously, if he puts this abomination, this is the fourth highest abomination, look, they're looking towards the east. I'm calling it Easter. It's like Satan's bumper sticker. Ishtar, Eostra. Oh, and by the way, Magog, that's, the, that's their big day. There's Easter Monday is actually a holiday across the whole United Kingdom. Easter Monday. You can't even just have one day. You gotta have Easter Sunday, Easter Monday. Get rid of the word. I'm just I, from the bottom of my soul, I just know it's the right thing to do. We have to come up with another name. We have to call it Resurrection Day. We have to call it Restoration Day. We have to call it something else. We have to do it on the right day. Are the Mormons right? No, they just happen to hit the right day. I mean, are they right? All I know is that I'm 
two completely opposite angles hit the same spot. It's the most important day of all time. If Christ is real, he's the man that was the lamb, and his blood can cover every single soul that lives, wouldn't that be a pretty important day? And if before that, thousands of years before, he tells Moses, You're going to do this on this day, and you're going to do it this way. And oh, by the way, let me show you the very first time. I'm going to kill the, the firstborn sons of all of Egypt on that night. And you better have the blood of the lamb on your doors, or your kids are going to die too. I don't know any other Passovers that the death angel flew over and killed a bunch of people besides that one, but I have a feeling it's going to happen again, the, the reaping of the angels. I don't know if it's on Passover or what day it is. Pastor Arnold often says that he thought the end would be like Exodus, like leaving Egypt the first time, and that most of the same plagues would happen. Except for the, the, the new big plague was the sun, burning the earth with fire. I'm just saying, why, why take the chance? It's for God. We take, you know, if Christmas is on a Tuesday, we all take off Tuesday, but guess what? Christmas is not for Christ. Because we say it is, but we worship the sun, Tammuz, that's Tammuz, or that's Osiris, you know, the sun. It's, it's people not understanding, oh my god, the sun goes down for three days and the horizon it might not ever come back. Oh, it comes back on the 25th. That's the day we're going to say that he's born. No, 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 no. But now it makes sense. They worship the sun. would be pretty cool if Christ was in the sun. Hey, buddy! If somebody worshiping Christ, I wouldn't be worshiping the sun. But if we think the way God thinks, things are different. We think things aren't that big a deal. We live in America. We let everybody do whatever they want to do. You know, and Germany is Germany's way, and Russia is Russia's way, and Israel is Israel's way. But God is God's way. And if you want to worship Him, and you want to have the blood of the last Passover lamb, I would, in watching what the world is doing, I would want to get blessed, and I would change. I would change it. I would not keep saying Easter, 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 unless you really think the Son is God and that the Creator of all things doesn't care. They also think the God of the Old Testament is the Savior. Some big ifs right there. Jovi, Jupiter, Bon Jovi. The highest, smartest people on the planet follow the mystery religions. You have to be initiated to find out everything. Could they all be that dumb to not listen, or did they try to trick all of us? comforter in the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. And what do you have us do in Ezekiel chapter 8? Dig in the wall and look and see what they do. Now you can just turn on TV. This was in the temple. In, in his temple. So again, why is he so mad? And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. Behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. So Mithras, Sol Invictus, then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? London Mithrams and Roman Mithrams. Then he said to me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is that they... I just can't even barely talk. I'm just... Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? Yes, it is. They even have Easter Monday. It's a national holiday. For they have filled the land with violence, and they have returned to provoke me to anger. I'm telling you, and lo, they will put the branch to their nose. 
Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither shall I have pity. Though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Or we change it from Easter to what it was supposed to be. Either we don't do it at all, because we just do Passover. Rises on the third day, from the day. Not according to the moon. I've been trying so hard for so many years. Every time I sat in Angel Stadium and I prayed as hard as I could pray because Rick Warren was in the middle. Um, and we were actually there on April 3rd, which was Passover. And he stood in the middle and I was praying as hard as I could pray and he kind of stopped and he looked and then he goes, Easter, Easter, Easter. I gave him the whole thing. I mean, he knows. Most people know. They, they chose. They chose the Son. In the Bible it says, Son of Righteousness. And there's a song in Rome, the Flaming Lucifer song. Flaming Lucifer's invincible. Flaming Son is invincible. And the Son is Christ. But we'll see, won't we? God come to the Mormon church on April 3rd with Eli Elijah, Elias, Christ, Jehovah, everybody came on April 3rd. So you're going to start this church on April 6th. Why? Why? Back soon.
these tolls start to charge on 